Hello there. A warm welcome to the program. I'm Olayemi Odunuga, and this is Tech Trends. On the program this week, we showcase the innovations of Leslie John Jumbo, an embedded systems developer from River State. Plus, I'll be chatting with Microsoft's country manager for Nigeria and Ghana, Olatomiwa Williams, on Nigeria's digital transformation. We have so much lined up for you on the program, but as always, this is the program that takes you on a ride in 25 minutes to seek out innovation and creativity that are unique to Africa. Together, we have the power to inspire, connect, and deliver on new opportunities and rich experiences that can open doors to innovation and progress while growing global economies and increasing well-being. Leslie John Jumbo is an embedded systems developer from River State and he's also an innovator with many creations. From Eclix, which looks like a handband that can give telepathic powers, to Hiware, a gesture control device that allows you to control your computer's mouse with hand gestures. Leslie's love for innovation pushes him to constantly design and build systems. In this report, Leslie, also known as Zane, shares his story with us on Tech Trends. Hey guys, it's Zane here. So my team and I made a device that helps you control your computer using hand gestures. Let's see how it works. Meet Leslie John Jumbo, a passionate embedded systems developer and an aspiring robotics engineer. So my team and I made a device that helps reduce carbon emissions. He is also an 18-year-old in Port Harcourt River State, breaking barriers in the world of technology. I've always wanted to build cool tech gadgets since I was a kid, so I always played around with batteries, DC motors, alongside magnets. It's been a huge dream for me since I was a kid alongside my friends who actually turned teammates or workmates. Seeing things I think of come to life is just heartwarming for me. But as I tech, I love to do other things like skateboarding, play retro games, as well as tennis. Leslie's journey into the realm of hardware wasn't a walk in the park. For him, and like many others, hardware is hard. But that very challenge piqued his curiosity. Through networking and then a tech boot camp, he kick-started his career with a dynamic team. As someone who has always wanted to be a hardware developer, I wanted to see such people around me too. But everyone in my community were into software, probably because there was no space for hardware learning, you know. So I went to an event where I met the startup founder. His name is reach out to the A people, the founder of Technoview Innovations Nigeria. And he <clears throat> he bought the idea. He bought the idea of, you know, making this boot camp where we could learn robotics, AI and IoT. So I met my friends there. We started to learn and learn but on a very basic level. So after the whole boot camp, we went ahead to learn more on the internet. We became really close friends and workmates too. But being a tech enthusiast and a student simultaneously poses its own set of challenges. Leslie explains how he navigates the delicate dance between academia and his passion for innovation. Okay, so how I balance school and work. Um, the curriculum doesn't actually um, you know, give us space, um, you know, time to do what we're doing. So it's really not so balanced, but we try our best. I try my best as well as my team. We try to like time block activities, allocate specific time to specific activities so you know we know what we're doing. It's your plan to be able to speak with you. Let's check it out. I call it the vase. The vase has audio capabilities which helps the plants communicate to a human. Let's check it out. With divine creativity as their guide, Leslie and his team have created numerous solutions with each one a testament to their dedication and grit. So how I get my ideas? More than 90% of the people that see our projects ask that question. It's honestly from God, honestly. 
I pray every day for creativity and he just feeds them to me. The ideas, he feeds them to me. Sometimes it's from everyday experience and sometimes my friends and I brainstorm, but I believe more of that is from God. So some of the projects I've worked on with my team includes the high wear. The high wear is a smart pair of shoes that count your steps, track your location, as well as measure your weight. The weight measurement feature wasn't actually so accurate, but we're still you know, looking to see how we can make that better. We also have a device called the AirClicks. The AirClicks is a device that controls your computer using gestures. We made a first version and a second version. We, we also made a device recently called the Vase. The Vase is a smart plant vase that makes your plant to communicate with you through audio. So it could tell you if it needs water or if it needs sunlight. It could also tell you the pH level of the soil. Another project we built is the Reforest AI. It was actually a hackathon project, but it actually went so well that we want to further develop it. So what it does is it tracks to see if trees have been cut down or not and reports to the database, whatever it's seen. It uses solar panels to, it uses um, a MPU 6050 to track the orientation of trees and measure the vibration of trees to, to see if they've been cut down or they're being cut down currently. To many people, it sounds very impractical, but we really want to see this come to life and we really want to learn more. The journey hasn't been without its own problems. Challenges of funding and the looming threats of fake products, for example, cast shadows. It is a tough road, but as an innovator with an unwavering passion, Leslie faces it head on. Number one is finance, literally, because a lot of our projects are bad straight out of the box sometimes. Sometimes we we don't handle them well because of, you know, less knowledge about them or because it's our first time using them. So sometimes they spoil while we work and yeah, but most of the times it's fake products that we buy. And another thing is disbelief. This disbelief that would actually, you know, amount to something. I know a lot of friends I have that were also doing what I'm doing and stopped because it's just not working out and they just don't see a future. Because software guys are making it out there here in Nigeria and there's nothing stopping us from actually learning what they're doing, but it's not what we like to do. We like to do what we are doing right now. And I strongly do believe that we will do great in this field, but that disbelief hits us sometimes. But amidst the trials, there are opportunities which have blossomed like flowers in adversity. Leslie and his team have found a silver lining turning their obstacles into stepping stones towards greater success. So opportunities that have opened up since we started our tech career, well, we've got to meet awesome people, honestly. We've got to know each other better as teammates too. Um, we've gone, you know, we've traveled to a new state, at least that's something. Um, we are actually just growing more in our knowledge and being more open to the world out there. Our curiosity is going beyond the fence because of what we're seeing every day online out of a lot of research. Yeah, I got a mentor too from this so that's a plus my teammates too have been opened up to a new world you know we're basically growing together thank god i love it yeah in the world of technology where every circuit tells a story leslie john jumbo's journey is one of passion perseverance and promise and by facing challenges head on and early enough he is shaping his future in technology Did you know the world's first computer mouse was wooden and not plastic? The first computer mouse was invented by Douglas Engelbart in 1963. It was a groundbreaking device that revolutionized how we interact with computers. 
Engelbart, a researcher at Stanford University, patented the mouse in 1970. Originally, it wasn't called a mouse, but rather the XY position indicator for display systems. Phew, that's a mouthful. However, Engelbart thought it resembled a rodent, and so the name mouse stuck. Made of wood and featuring just one button, Engelbart designed the mouse to work with a graphical user interface, GUI. It was publicly demonstrated for the first time in 1968 at the Fall Joint Computer Conference in San Francisco. Initially, the mouse wasn't widely embraced as GUIs weren't yet common and many people still used command line interfaces. Today, however, the mouse is indispensable for most computer users, facilitating tasks like pointing, clicking and scrolling. Engelbart's invention was the result of years of research and experimentation. The mouse design has evolved over time, incorporating more buttons and utilizing different materials. There are now various types of mouse, including mechanical, optical, trackballs and wireless models. How much do you really know about the tech world? Put your knowledge to the test with these trivia questions. In 1992, NASA mission specialist Mae Jemison became the first African-American woman in space when she traveled aboard the space shuttle whose name has a British spelling. Voyage, Astroverse, Endeavour, Space Ride. And the answer is Endeavour. What innovative radio company developed the Music Genome Project to classify music by mirroring mathematical techniques for gene sequencing within human DNA? The company is named after the first human woman created by the gods in Greek mythology. Pandora, Westergren, Hephaestus, Prometheus. And the answer is Pandora. What British woman is considered to have written the first ever piece of computer software developing an algorithm for Charles Baggage's theoretical analytical engine in the 1840s? She was the only child of George Gordon, Lord Byron. She is best known with an L last name. Augusta Lord, Ada Lovelace, Annalise Lovelace, Ada King Loretta. And the answer is Ada Lovelace. Show me the photos from our anniversary was a quote in the Love Story commercial about a woman named Loretta that provoked tears in viewers from what technology giant in 2020? Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, Google. And the answer is Google. Nigeria's digital transformation is gaining momentum with a concerted effort to leverage technology for economic development and societal advancement. From the expansion of digital infrastructure to the promotion of innovation and digital literacy, the country is navigating a dynamic landscape to harness the full potential of the digital age. My guest on the program this week is Ola Tomiwa Williams, Microsoft's country manager for Nigeria and Ghana, and she will be speaking on Nigeria's digital transformation. You are the first female dual country director for Microsoft in West Africa. Tell me, how does it feel? Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to represent female 
folk and to be a, a leader figure in, in tech industry for upcoming young women. It comes with a lot of responsibility and of course um, it is a privilege for me and really uh, grateful for that. And it also makes me in a position that yes, I need to get it right so that other women can really see that it's possible to achieve this and aspire to be better than I am. You once said, and I quote, being deliberate in driving gender diversity agenda will help accelerate the positive impacts of technology on us all. Now, as a prominent voice and advocate for women in tech, what are your thoughts on where we are in that area? I think it's a journey. Um, there has been a lot of intervention to attract more women into tech industry and STEM in general, but there's still a long way to go. We still need more people, more voice on the table. We need more participation. We meet, need more deliberateness in ensuring that we have more women coming into technology and not just only coming into technology, but thriving and also growing to be a leader in this industry. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but part of your job is to lead Microsoft's efforts in Nigeria's digital transformation journey. What are some of the strides you've made? I think we've been able to, you know, achieve um, some great impact um, in the country, um, building on the work that has been done by my pre pre predecessors and also working with the team and with the support of the global structure that we have. In Nigeria, we've been able to sign an MOU with the federal government of Nigeria to skill 5 million youth in the country. We're making a lot of strides with our customers. Um, we have a number of financial services industry that are using Microsoft platform to transform their businesses. And of course, we are having engagement with non-for-profit organizations to see how we can actually make technology accessible for all. There is a number of initiatives that we're driving in the country also around our airband initiative that provides connectivity to underserved communities. We're working with stakeholders to see how we can partner to ensure that Nigeria actually uh, take advantage of the AI revolution that we is making wave across the globe. And we have the right structure to skill people, to build the right policy in partnership with government and to ensure that people have access to the tools and resources that they need to be able to use AI responsibly in a way that is beneficial to all. Now, before we delve more into artificial intelligence, let's still talk more about Nigeria's digital transformative journey, transformation journey. As a country actively pursuing our own initiatives to give us a boost and also considering our unique challenges, is there anything we're doing right or wrong? Um, I think Nigeria government, uh, based on our engagement with the Ministry of Communication, Innovation and Digital Economy, we are building the right trajectory towards digital transformation in the country. Are there opportunities, areas of opportunity? Certainly, yes. But with Nigeria coming up with a cloud force policy, I think it's a step in the right direction. And the ministers, you know, uh, drive to ensure that we drive inclusive and reliable AI practices in Nigeria with the call for the, for the AI strategy for the nation is a step in the right direction. Building on the policy work that NIDA is doing around AI strategy, we are setting the, pay, the, the right platform or the right foundation for us to really build on that. Um, and of course, connectivity um, uh, is still an area of opportunity for us. But I believe with the effort in place to ensure that you know, fiber reaches the um, nook and crannies of the country, we should be able to mitigate that. And that is the pathway for us to really ensure that technology is accessible to all and we are able to build on the work that has been done in the past years. AI is you know, being adopted into almost every sector and so many startups are also infusing it into their solutions and products. Microsoft is running programs that, you know, is helping to accelerate its acceptance. What are some of the misconceptions about AI that you've encountered? I've seen so many misconceptions about AI and heard so many people talk about AI. 
um, that oh, AI has come to replace human beings, it's going to take away all our jobs, uh, AI is not what it think it is. Uh, but the actual fact is, AI is created by human. But of course, we understand that as AI evolves, there is need for us to ensure that it's built in a way that is beneficial for us, for all. And it's also built and used responsibly so that it doesn't cause harm for human beings. But most importantly, is the fact that people need to understand what is AI, how does it impact their life, and how can they prepare themselves to be able to benefit from it. That is the important conversation that we should be having. We're not unaware of the potential uh, challenges that AI should bring, but when we have public sector, private sector, and the um, entire academia community and everyone involved in crafting the way forward on how we can use AI responsibly, then we will build a structure that will make it to be beneficial for all. Nigeria still has an issue with financial inclusion. You know, some of so many Nigerians are still unbanked. How can AI help? I think you made a very important point. AI actually have the capability to help us to drive more inclusion in our financial services. For example, with AI um, and access to the right set of data, financial organizations can predict um, people's credit scoring and be able to offer credit to people uh, that are currently uh, not able to have access to credit. And the more people see that it's working for them, the more people will be banked. So we need to see how we can help get AI to build use cases that are relevant to different industries. And definitely ha AI have the potential to really help drive financial inclusion in Nigeria by providing services that is tailored towards people that are currently unbanked. With the acceleration of cloud adoption globally, Tell me how Microsoft's cloud solutions are supporting digital innovation and infrastructure in Nigeria. I think there are a number of things that we've done um, in Nigeria. For starters, Microsoft is the organization that first developed a full-fledged enterprise scale data center in Africa, which is based in South Africa. And we've made significant investment in Africa from you know, infrastructure to skilling to capability building and access to connectivity. And if we bring it down home in Nigeria with the, what we're doing with federal government around skilling Nigerian youth, we're providing a pathway for them to be skilled for op job opportunities for now and in the future. And not only that, we're also providing a pathway for employability for the people that are skilled with our partnership with UNDP around the Jubilee program, which provides um, internship opportunities for young Nigerians to be able to uh, get you know, work experience based on, 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 on the skills and capabilities that they have. And also what we're doing with the federal government of Nigeria around our air band initiative, where we, we leverage unused TV white space license to provide connectivity to underserved communities. And we're doing that uh, across the country in, in all these six geopolitical uh, sector of the country. Well, that was such an insightful conversation with you, Ola Tomiwa Williams, Microsoft Country Manager for Nigeria and Ghana. Thank you so much for joining us on Tech Trends. Thank you for having me. And here's where we draw the curtain on the program this week. Thank you always for watching. Remember, if you are interested in keeping track of our tech-savvy innovators and crafting homegrown solutions using technology in the country, well, keep watching Tech Trends because we will continue to showcase them for you. From startups to big techs and, of course, inventful thinkers. Also, if you missed any part of the show, you can always catch up on the channel's TV YouTube account where we have all of our episodes. And I encourage you to watch, share, and like your favorite editions. For Tech Trends, I'm Olayemi Udunuga. I'll see you next time.